hear me? So, no, no, that's a good Give me a okay. What is the back end? Let you know when it's finished. Yes. I think we are okay. We start now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, a big warm welcome to Dr. Bala. And uh, on behalf of the, our directors and our members, we welcome you. Um, and uh, we appreciate you're giving us. Uh, Asha Australia Foundation is and was and will be supporting our seniors so that they can live active and healthy life. We have five seniors groups and we hope that we'll have many more. During COVID, we've been supporting a lot of our seniors with online programs of daily Bollywood music, weekly yoga and antashri sessions, and fortnightly health talks. And these health talks, this is, are very important for our seniors. And we are very grateful to all the specialists and doctors. Hello, it's good to join in. Who support us. So, uh, uh, this month has been very special for us. We have had the big September on 9th. We had the big launch of the Elder Abuse 2 short films in Hindi. First time in Australia, maybe first time uh, in the Western country that the, in Hindi Elder Abuse videos been made. We feel very proud along with senior rights. We love it. And uh, Asha got um, award two days before from the Center of Volunteering for the best team of the year. So thank you to all our members and our supporters who are there, whether they are on the Facebook or on the WhatsApp. I'm going to request Dr. Sundar, please briefly introduce Dr. Bala. Yes, Dr. Dr. Sundar. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Dr. Bala, good afternoon, Dr. Bala. Thank you for coming over. And also to all the also family, all my friends. You know, just a small introduction for Dr. Bala. Dr. Bala, we call him Associate Professor Chandra Bala or Bala Chandra is managing their personal eyes. He specializes in cataract, cornea, glaucoma, and refractive surgery. Uh, he's associate professor at McCarthy University and he's the examiner for fellowship examiner, examiners for the eyes. He graduated from Sydney University with the honors. He has uh, completed multiple fellowship and a leading species all over the world. From, from here, Sydney, to Boston, Holland, and Greece. Yes, he has completed multiple fellowship, as he said, you know, with the different species all over the world. And his work has been published both in national and in uh, international reviews. And he has won multiple awards in different conferences, including in Boston, uh, in Kyoto, and also in Paris. Today's topic is cataract and diabetes in elderly people. Welcome, Dr. Bala. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sundar, and thank you to the Asha Foundation uh, for inviting me to present today. Um, the topic I was charged with was uh, cataract and diabetes. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you, and uh, we will walk through this together. Um, I hope you can see my screen there. Um, before we dive straight into cataract and diabetes and how it affects the eye, uh, we have to understand a little bit about the eye. And the reason for that is losing one's is one of the most scary events that can happen to a human being. And when you come to see an eye specialist, you're already, most people are quite nervous as it is. And then... It's Council yeah. property. It is Council property. Sorry. Uh, sorry, Dr. Sundar, you have to mute yourself. Thank you. Sorry. So when people come, they're already quite anxious and worried about what the eye specialist is going to say. And then the eye specialist tries to explain what the problem is. And in the middle of all that, one is quite, can come out quite lost from the whole process. So the first thing I would like everybody to understand and to remember, and I want you to follow with me, is what is an eye and how it works. And this will help you greatly understand that there is no one solution for all problems. 
Whereas there might be one symptom, which is I can't see properly, doctor. Behind that is a complex system. The eye as a, is a very special organ. It, the information derived from the eye almost get to process it. One third of the brain is devoted just to that one task. So it's a very special organ in, you know, from an anatomical point of view, uh, from a spiritual point of view, uh, from an emotional point of view, all sorts of views, the eye comes down to being mission critical. Unlike other sense organs, which allow you to touch, taste, which are all near, the eye is the only thing that gets you a sense of perception of far. You can from far away decide if an object is soft or hard. You can from far away decide if it's big or small. So it is a very powerful organ and you all know that. Fundamental to the understanding of the eye is to understand that it's like a room. Light comes in through a window. Behind the window, like in any room, there is a curtain. And behind that curtain, the difference is you have a second window in the eye. The front window is set in the wall of the room because there is a wall, it's a room. Then the curtain is sitting there behind that window. The second window, there is no wall anymore. So that second window is suspended by cables. The front window is called the cornea. The curtain is called the iris, which is the colored part of the eye. And in most Indian people, it's brown. Some people, it can be green. And in various parts of the world, green, blue, there are various shades. So that's the shade of the curtain. Behind the curtain is a second window, which is called the lens. Together, the two windows, one behind the other, focus light on the back wall. So if your house has wallpaper, the eye also has wallpaper. And that wallpaper takes that image. The wallpaper is separate from the wall. The wallpaper takes that image and that wallpaper is called the retina, converts it to electricity, like in a video camera, and sends it down a cable to be processed by a computer, which is your brain. The cable is called the optic nerve. Now, let's look at it from an animation point of view, what that looks like. This video is from Rendia. The link is attached. This is an animation. It has no voice, so don't worry about it. That front window is the cornea. Most people don't realize there is a window in front of the colored part of the eye. There has to be a window or the colored part of the eye would fall out. The curtain would fly out of the house. So the curtain stays inside because there's a front window. The cornea is where we do laser surgery to get rid of eye uh, glasses. Then behind that is the curtain, which is the colored part of the eye. The colored part of the eye will open or close to allow variable amount of light to go in. On a bright day, it'll go smaller. At night, it gets bigger. Behind that is the lens. The two lenses, the cornea is a lens too. It pro provides a lot of light bending ability and the inside lens also provides a lot of light bending ability. The inside lens you see is not in the wall. Here, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but at the edge of the lens are little cables. It's hanging 360 degrees like a suspended photo frame in the middle of the room. That's your lens where cataract will affect you. So most people think cataract is some a growth that grows on the front of the eye. That is definitely not the case. Behind that, the light then passes through that inside window and falls on the wallpaper. And this wallpaper is the retina. Okay. Now, like any wall, the room, let's say, has blood supply, right? So water has to come in, blood has to come in, and blood has to go out of the eye. It, otherwise, if it just comes in, it'll flood. So like in a house, in a room, a pipe will bring water in and a pipe will take water out. Those are the blood vessels that you're seeing. Some of these are arteries that bring blood in and some of these are veins that take blood out. It says, I would like you to stick with that concept of a room. There, light is being converted, as you can see, by the retina and is being sent down the optic nerve 
which is the cable connecting now this video camera to the brain. And it goes all the way to the back of the brain where in fact the processing happens. The vision is analyzed here. Why is this relevant? Well, if you understand this process, you will understand the subsequent talks quite easily and you will understand and be able to tailor your expectations to what can actually be done by an eye specialist. So the front window is the cornea, which is here on the image on the right. Then there is an iris, which you're seeing in section. Then there is a lens. Now diabetes, unfortunately, is a common condition amongst the Indian diaspora. We seem to have that as often as we seem to have the OCI card. The population is not only severely affected, but the population seems to struggle to control it most of the time. And it is quite tragic to see a lot of Indian people whose diabetes, they have worked their, their whole life, they've worked hard for their families, and at the end of the day, come 50 or 60, they've got severe diabetes, and there's nothing more than the sense of loss that you get, that I have put this much hard work and now all the life's tensions have resolved, things have gone, family is settled. Now you have a new set of problems. And so it's very important that we understand diabetes and know what to expect and how to control it. Uh, after my talk, there is a talk on how, to, how diet can help you. So I'd like you to stay on after my talk and listen and pay attention to that. Diabetes affects 1.8 million Australians. And out of them, 500,000 people roughly we expect don't even know that they have diabetes. Most people are type two diabetic. Type one diabetics tend to be children, young adults who've got a loss of uh, an autoimmune condition. They immediately go on to insulin. Type two diabetics tend to start off with tablets and if they are really poorly controlled and have difficulty, they will go on to insulin. Regardless, how does diabetes affect the eye is the question. Okay. So we're going to start with another small video. And again, that's the link with Rendia, who's actually produced the video and they need to be given credit for it. This is diabetes affecting the eye. Diabetes does not immediately affect the eye. It takes a few years to affect the eye. Oftentimes, Diabetes has been around for a few years and has not been discovered in the first place. And therefore, we look for complications at the first time of presentation because we expect that you've been wandering around and there's been a delay of you figuring out you have diabetes for at least five years, during which there is a possibility of damage to the eye and other parts of the body. Now, diabetes over the long term, if you have high sugar, you will have more complications. So the higher and the poorer the control, the uh, higher the sugar, the more the damage. Now, how does diabetes affect the eye? In terms of affecting the eye, the fundamental part it will affect is it going back to your room analogy is the wallpaper. The wallpaper is special. It's not the same all over the room. In the middle of the room, this particular spot is very precious. This is the most important part. This is where you look at, it's called the fovea, and it's the most important part for reading. If you damage the wallpaper to one side, then it doesn't have such a big impact on your vision as if you damage in the middle. Diabetes does two things to the blood vessel. It'll either make a blood vessel leak or it'll make it block. Essentially, that's what happens with any plumbing in a house. A pipe in a house is either going to block or it's going to break. If it breaks, it leaks. If it leaks, the wallpaper will start bubbling up. The wallpaper will get waterlogged. The wallpaper cannot work properly. It might disintegrate and you might have to fix that leak. You can fix the leak, but in the process, the wallpaper is stained. It is damaged permanently. So the best scenario would be not to let it leak in the first place. If it gets blocked, you can try and unblock it. But this is very tiny tube, so it's very difficult to unblock it. Therefore, the wallpaper that is supplied by the tube will now die. So the sort of complications you can get 
in diabetes with diabetes type 1 or type 2 doesn't matter with poor long term control it will either make the blood vessels leak or block the plumbing will leak or it will block so if you now look at this animation what you start seeing is when the blood vessel is going to leak it's going to leak blood so you get red spots all over if the blood vessel gets blocked the retina the wallpaper starts showing white blotches what else is there in the blood apart uh, in the blood vessel apart from blood there is fat you know you eat food you get sugar in your blood and you get oil as well if it starts leaking the fat will also leak out and it will crystallize and i'm going to show you that in some real life photos but in this animation in parts you will see small dots of blood and then there are big blotches of blood the small dots they are the places where the blood vessels are getting weaker the plumbing the pipe hasn't burst yet it's sitting there waiting and if it weakens further poof it starts leaking blood right now just like fixing plumbing in the house once the water is leaked you can't take a sponge and soak it up then there has to be profuse amount of that the the wallpaper will get soggy so as a surgeon i'm no more powerful than you in cleaning your wallpaper i am reliant on you not leaking in the first place is the best solution now so in diabetes blood vessels are like pipes they will either leak or block they are, the diabetes will affect other parts of your body too and you are familiar with that you hear about stents in people's hearts those are blood vessels that are getting blocked or a bypass operation where you tie up a new blood vessel to bypass a blockage but in the eye you are looking at 1/10th of a millimeter there is no technology to put a stent in something that is 1/10th of a millimeter so that is why it can be a big problem in controlling diabetes in the eye as i said to you before the most important part of your wallpaper is that area that dark spot in the middle i don't know if my cursor is you one of the viewers has to tell me okay so this is a normal eye this is a normal eye okay the eye to the right is abnormal let's look at this one first there is mild to moderate diabetic retinopathy you can see the leakage starting and you can see white spots now this patient is not going to have any symptoms they are not going to notice that there is anything wrong with them they are going to go to their gp or to the optometrist and they are going to be told you need an eye check then they are going to say i need an eye check i am perfectly fine you are sending me to some other person who now i have got to pay three appointments cost this that and the other but you notice they already have a change in that retina blood is leaking it is coming towards the middle once it comes towards the middle vision will drop then it will be too late and which is what has started to happen to this person here who's unfortunately got profound diabetic retinopathy not only is blood streaking out this white blotch is where the retina is dying because of blockage these are because of leaks these radial spokes that's leakage of fat from the blood vessel even if you manage to stop the leakage it's going to take 3 to 6 months for the fat to reabsorb into the system and any portions that are dead gone forever we cannot bring them back so that is essentially from your point of view is a way of realizing that your sugar control is the primary driver of your cure if you've been diabetic for 15 20 years you can't expect an instant change you can't go to the doctor and say tomorrow fix me it's going you i say oh tomorrow onwards i'm not going to have any sugar no confit i'm not i'm going to cut my coffee you can make all those promises but even if you put the brake on the train the train takes a few years to slow down and come to a halt it is not an instantaneous thing and therefore it's better to make small changes which are sustainable rather than pretending that you can stop immediately and everything will be okay tomorrow 
So the fundamental top three things you need to know for treating your diabetes are better sugar control, better sugar control, better sugar control. Followed by, we are quite lucky these days, we have injections available. Now to say to a patient, I'm going to put an injection in your eye, you can imagine how petrified that human being is going to be. You're sticking a needle in my eye. Yes, because that needle contains a medication which will stop the blood vessels from leaking. Not the blocked ones, that's gone. But the ones that are leaking, we can stop them from leaking. Unfortunately, you have to do that every month for years because the train still hasn't stopped. So you have to continue doing that. Not doing that means you go blind. 30% of diabetics in the past used to go blind from the disease. So the injection stops the eye from leaking. It's often a monthly injection. And as long as your wallpaper has not disintegrated, your sight will come back. If you've gone too late, then the whole job is to preserve what you have. So it is important. That's why it's important to go for regular checks. The laser can't make that fluid come back in that area anymore. So the laser is largely being used. These It used to be used for that purpose. The laser, what does it do? A laser is a heating device that will go into your eye and heat the wallpaper at the back without heating any of the room as it passes through the room. So if you have a leaking blood vessel, you can burn that blood vessel. So the plumbing gets burnt at that spot. Well, what happens to the retina that is to be supplied by the blood vessel? Well, it's gone. Unless a secondary collateral new blood vessel is created by the body, the singular purpose is to burn. So the injection is not destructive, whereas a laser is a bit destructive. So laser has reduced in its importance. And if you need surgery for diabetic retinopathy, that means you are really far gone. Then none of these measures are able to get your sight back. So again, the fundamental step here is to look at diabetes as a plumbing issue of your eye and to get your sugar under control. Now let's go to the second disease. I hope if, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. The second disease is cataract. Everybody has heard of cataract called Motia bean in Hindi, all sorts of different names are there. And the cataract, it's a double-edged sword. Fortunately or unfortunately, everybody gets it. Now, the average patient age in my practice for cataract surgery is around 72. Roughly, this is when most people will come with a cataract. There are some people who will come at the age of 35, 18, but vast majority at 70. There are some people who are 90 plus or even 100 and they come with a cataract. They are more blessed, they have good eyesight. But what is the, but most often the cataract develops slowly and people don't realize that their eyesight is dropping. The only way they will know it is if they go to their doctor or they will go to the optometrist when they try to upgrade their glasses. The fundamental way they will know is their vision on that chart is dropping. The other way they will know is the cataract is causing glare. Here is a picture of a patient with a cataract in their right eye. You first thing you notice that it is behind the colored part of the eye. It's not in the front window, it's in the back window. And if you have a cataract this bad that you can see it a meter away, well, then you've left it late. You needed to have gone much earlier. This person is not, is barely seeing light out of the eye. Okay. So this is a white cataract. It happens quite late. It happens quite suddenly for some people. It's often metabolic. Diabetes is a risk factor. So one of the fundamental causes of getting a cataract is if you live long enough, essentially knees and eyes are always, cataract surgery and knee surgery are, all, are pretty common. If you've had diabetes for a long time, you will get more cataract. If your sugars have been fluctuating a lot, you will get more cataract. If you take steroid creams, use them sparingly. 
Otherwise, the steroid will cause a cataract. If you take steroid tablets, well, you obviously need to. So you need to follow the instructions of your doctor. But again, the unfortunate side effect is it can cause a cataract. And, but these take a long time to develop. There is no eye drop for a cataract. They are an irreversible process at this stage. Okay. So to correct a cataract, you can't take an eye drop. Every, a lot of people will come and say, give me an eye drop to fix my cataract. That is unfortunately not yet the case. It may be in 30 years time, but for the moment, we all have to go through a procedure. It is one of the commonest operations on the planet. And it is a very safe procedure. The risk of complications is less than one in 500. The risk of you going blind from the operation is for statewide average is less than one in 30,000. Okay. It is nowadays done without stitches in the eye. And yes, you need to put a lens in the eye. So let me show you a video of cataract, how it is done. This is also a video from Rendia. I'll just follow. So this is an animation that is showing the normal eye. There's a front window, then the inside window. The inside window, both of them together focus light on the wallpaper, as we talked about before. But when the inside window gets dirty, it's a cataract. And what happens? It scatters light, it yellows the lens, and so the vision also becomes a bit yellowy. It's a simulation here. The thing is, most people don't realize that this is happening to them. There is more glare with oncoming headlights. People often think people have changed. Oh, they're making stronger headlights these days. It's not a stronger headlight. It is actually glare because of light scatter. You don't realize your eyesight's turning yellow. So what the important reason for going to an optometrist is the government has certain rules and regulations about how much you should see to maintain a license. We can't allow people to jeopardize other people's lives because they can't see properly. So the RTA has guidelines where it says you need to see this much to get a license. Now we will not, as eye specialists, generally, we will not wait for you to lose your license before we do the operation. So as you approach that criteria, we offer the surgery to you. Not everybody has a license. So you say, well, doctor, you don't really have to see so well. I don't even drive a car. Why should I do it? Generally, that has become the nationwide benchmark that if you reach that level, you're going to have difficulty even seeing contrast. At nighttime, there is increased falls risk. You may not notice. You may trip and fall a bit more, which then leads to other problems. You can break a hip. Or, uh, so generally, as the vision mm -hmm. drops, the contrast drops, and we are always interested in saying, Hang on, this is an important relation you have to do to the room. You have to do the right things at the right time in your life. You can't do them at the wrong time. You have to do, there is an appropriate time for renovation, for fixing yourself, to reinvigorate yourself so that you can continue to function in the community. Because these days, grandparents are all too busy looking after other people's children their children's children, their grandkids. So they have many roles. And even after they retire, they're more busy than before. So let me show you this animation, which again shows you in animation form, as you can see that lens is getting blurry. So what is the surgeon going to do? This is not a problem where the blood vessels are leaking. No injection is required. This is a problem where a physical window has to be removed. So we make a hole in that lens, we break it up and we take it out. Once we take it out, this operation takes about. We then get to put a new lens in. Together, this new lens and the front window will again allow the person to see better. And so the clarity of vision improves. Technology is changing these days. Your, some of our, my patients' parents didn't even get a lens. So they used to wear this. The, we used to call it the soda bottle uh, glasses, which used to be uber thick. We don't do that anymore. Every patient nowadays gets a lens. The lens will last you the rest of your life. This is not an operation you have to go through again. Occasionally a film forms behind the lens, in which case we just yag, laser it, 
takes 30 seconds and the vision comes back. So the fix is a permanent fix. It's a positive fix for life for the patient. Of course, there are newer technologies that are available. That same operation nowadays, we can move precisely with laser. So your recovery time is much faster. You do an operation, maybe about five, 10 days, two weeks later, we can do the other eye and the laser does most of the job. So again, technology has vastly improved, but that technology is going to work for a diabetic patient. All I'm going to do is I'm going to change a window. The wallpaper, if it's damaged, we can't fix that wallpaper like that. It is most tragic to go through an operation and then not able to get good vision because the wallpaper has been permanently damaged by diabetes. So they are separate conditions. A surgeon can't go do a cataract operation and fix your macular degeneration, glaucoma, and uh, diabetic retinopathy at the same time. <clears throat> Most people would come with the expectation, doctor, my eyesight's not good. Why can't you fix it in one go? Because there are different problems in different parts of the room. You can't expect the painter to fix the plumbing. Similarly, you have to have different solutions for different parts of the eye. So whilst your complaint might be singular, the solutions can sometimes be multiple. Nowadays, technology is changing so fast that we are able to put lenses in that allow you to see far and near. We are able to do lenses that allow you to read on your phone. And nowadays, most people have phones. Even a one-year-old can turn on a mobile phone nowadays. They can swipe on the iPad and open it up. So technology like that in a 70-year-old person around now has WhatsApp, has Facebook and is active all the time. So our visual demands are also changing and the, the doctors realize that and are altering their practices so that depending upon what your needs are, we can customize which lens you get. But that's a separate conversation. Uh, today, I wanted to just cover these basic things about what cataract is, what a normal eye is supposed to look like, what diabetes does to you. And if there's one take home message, it would be that you must prevent the problems from diabetes. You don't have to prevent the problems from cataract because that's a fix we can achieve. But preventing the problem with diabetes is mission critical and that is far more important than the treatment for diabetes. I hope that was, uh, that was satisfactory. Thank you very much once again. Thank you, Dr. Bala. That was really, really very accurate and in the simple form for all of us to understand. I hope you stay. I'm going to introduce Mubina, who's a dietitian, who's going to complement what you have said with the diet and exercise. So that uh, after that, we'll have question time. Before uh, uh, she goes ahead, I have a few questions. Uh, no, we, Poon, I'm sorry. The questions will be after the, we finish Mubina's talk. So can you please, uh, I, I apologize. Can you please wait for that time? So, so that their questions can be targeted to Mubina or to Dr. Bala. So which we realize that along with the medical thing, the health uh, is important to have a good diet and exercise. So thank you, Dr. Bala and Mubina. Can we have Mubina, please? Thank you, Mubina. Mubina? Yes, Siraj. Yes. Thank you. So. I can unshare his screen. So I'm just going to go to. So I take your time. Yeah. So Mubina is our not only manages our Facebook and media uh, as well. We are very fortunate. She spends hours in doing it, and she's a dietitian and is always there to help us with the good exercise and good food habits. Thank you, Mubina. Hello everyone, and thank Bijinder Ji for a beautiful introduction. I'm Mubina Jamdar. I'm a dietitian, nutritionist, and a life coach. I specialize in diabetes, high diabetes, weight management, and emotional well-being. I'm passionate about helping people live healthy and fulfilling lives. Dr. Bala rightfully mentioned that uh, uh, diabetes can lead to cataract, and we really need to stop 
uh, sort of getting diabetes. And this is a pandemic we are dealing with. And now more and more people are getting diabetes than it used to before. So what is it? What is it? Is it our diet, our lifestyle? What is it that making us actually uh, get more and more, more and more people getting diabetes? So we will learn, uh, this is just the beginning. This is a short uh, presentation today. And in uh, uh, coming presentation, we will learn more and more about it. So it's a very short presentation today. So uh, I'll start telling you, uh, telling you with uh, how I became interested in uh, uh, diabetes management. Uh, 20 years ago, when my husband was diagnosed with diabetes, uh, he started um, receiving all sorts of information on what to eat, what not to eat, and, uh, and uh, especially home remedies and potions to control diabetes. And some even mentioned treatment to cure diabetes permanently. This made me quite intrigued. Uh, that led me to an investigation and observation. Uh, to my despair, um, I discovered that most people with diabetes do not get a proper education and advice on how to manage their diabetes. And one of the popular myths, uh, you know, uh, I would like to share, you know, I'm sure you all have, would have heard of it, is um, sweet tea. Um, Sort of uh, cause you diabetes, and even it can it can make your diabetes worse. I can definitely say that this is a totally false belief. So yes, you can actually enjoy sweet tea, and it will um, not cause diabetes or make it worse. If you have a, only if you have a good understanding of food um, that you are eating, not only sweet tea, but you can actually enjoy all your favorite sweet treats as well. Only if you can find a right balance in your meals. Life is to enjoy. And food is an important source of pleasure. Especially as you grow older, food becomes an important part of comfort and happiness. The good news is that it is entirely possible to enjoy all your favorite food if you get a right education. People with diabetes do not need to eat anything special. A healthy diet with the right combination of different food items in each meal is all it requires. Which will not only keep the blood pressure um, under control, but also provide you with other health benefits such as vitamins and minerals and those magical antioxidants and phytochemicals that we hear about that will highly, uh, and the highly nutritious food will uh, do absolute wonder to overall health. It will provide you protection against heart disease, obesity, cancer, aches and pains in your body, and many other chronic diseases. You will feel more energetic and happier. But the story doesn't end here. Exercise and your emotional well-being are equally important in managing diabetes and for your overall health and happiness. If you're going to do all three, your health will improve three times as faster, maybe more. To understand diabetes, how food directly affects your blood glucose, we will look at this short video of Siraj. If you can let me share my screen, that would be awesome. You should be able to share your screen, try. Right. Uh, and the focus is on you. Yes, yes, definitely. Let me start. Yes. So this is just a two minute video. When you eat food that contains carbohydrate, it's broken down in the stomach and digestive system into glucose, which is a type of sugar. We need glucose from food because that's what gives us energy. Carbohydrate containing foods are things like starchy foods, sugary foods, milk and some dairy products and fruit. This glucose then moves into the bloodstream and the body detects that the blood glucose level is rising. In response to that, the pancreas, which is a little gland that sits just underneath the stomach, starts to release a hormone called insulin. 
and it's insulin that helps our body get the energy from the food we eat. The bloodstream then takes the glucose and the insulin to every cell in our body that needs it. To make this easier to understand, let's look at muscle cells. At the muscle cells, it's insulin that allows the glucose to get into the cells where it can be used for energy. It's a bit like insulin is a key unlocking the door to the cells so the glucose can get in. That way, the blood glucose level starts to drop. But the blood glucose level can be topped up at any point by the liver releasing extra glucose that it has stored. The blood glucose rises again, and again, the pancreas produces more insulin to move with that glucose through the bloodstream to the muscle cells, the doors, and let the glucose in. The body functions best with the blood glucose at an optimum level. It doesn't like it if the blood glucose rises too high. Normally, there's a cycle within the body which balances out the glucose and the insulin level. And this is achieved by the food you eat, the pancreas and the liver. However, in some people, the system doesn't work properly and they develop diabetes. There are two main types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. In type 1 diabetes, I'll stop here and I'll continue my talk. Okay. So there are mainly three types of diabetes, type 1, type 2, and gestational diabetes. Today we are focusing on type 2 diabetes only because type 2 is more common among elderly people and in adults in general, whereas type 1 is more common among children. Uh, 2020 has been very interesting and tough year for all of us. Social distancing has become a new norm. Our family and friends have been um, up uh, constrained in order to stay safe. Uh, the upside to this pandemic is that uh, it has uh, given us uh, easy access to our health professionals, such as doctors and dietitians, uh, over the phone or video call. Another positive that has come out of this pandemic is that uh, quality health information has become more accessible through virtual events such as this one. Keeping that in mind, Asha Foundation has created 10 weeks diabetes management program and we are very excited about it. Now you can learn how to manage diabetes and how to live a healthy, active and happy life whilst being comfortable in your home. This enables us to make a real difference in lives of people in our community. If you have a diabetes and want to learn how to control your diabetes, with a diet, exercise, and emotional well-being, then please put your name down for a free 10 weeks course. The form is provided in the chat box and in the comment box on Facebook. So it will be uploaded shortly and it will be posted in all the WhatsApp groups as well. Uh, thank you, Mabina and Dr. Bala. Uh, we will open for questions. Can I request Dr. Valanju very briefly to thank Mobina and Dr. Bala? And then for questions, please, uh, everybody can get stay muted. And if you have a question, raise your hand and unmute and we'll be able to and direct the question either to Mobina or Dr. Bala. Dr. Valanju, uh, is Dr. Valanju there? Dr. Valanju, can you hear me? Dr. Valenji, yes, please. Thank you, Dr. Valenji. Yeah, thank, thank you. Uh, well, thank you, Dr. Bala. Uh, it was a uh, very enlightening uh, uh, talk, and uh, I was really uh, very, very interested in your uh, analogy of the eye with the room with two windows. Uh, explained everything very, very well. And as you said, uh, uh, diabetes is a comorbidity which is causing a lot of problems, not just with, with our eyes, but 
even with COVID, we now are hearing about diabetes being one of the major, major comorbidity. And as you said, the, the importance of the control of the diabetes and the blood sugar levels is, uh, is very critical, uh, especially to, to prevent any complications. And it's no use just having the surgery if you don't control your diabetes, well, the results are going to be poor. But thank you very much for that nice talk. Mobina, it was excellent and uh, very, very nice uh, to see uh, that one of our own is going to really help people because this is a very important uh, problem. And I think it can be, it can okay, be. Please your hand if you want to say something. Uh, can you are raise your hand and then unmute yourself. Now, the following bit of the glucose. You got two doctors for the price of one. Aren't you lucky? <laughs> <laughs> are you are you finished, Sundar? <laughs> well, anyway. Unmute. Thank you, Dr. Balaji. Can we give a big <laughs> hand to Mobina and Dr. Bala, please? Let's give a big clap. Uh, if, uh, if you have a question, uh, Jyoti has a question. Jyoti, you have to unmute, please. Jyoti, if you unmute and we can, and can you please clearly say if it's, yeah, yes. here we are, Jyoti. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Bala and uh, Mubina for such a big information for diabetes and eyes. Uh, I've, got, I've got a question for the diabetes, Mubina, that uh, I want a proper diet for the, uh, for the diabetic people who are vegetarian and who are very chronic diabetic uh, and who, who are diabetic since 25 years. So can we have that diet chart, please? Um, thanks, Jyoti, for asking this very important question. Um, I offer here, get this request to get a diet chart. Um, unfortunately, there's no such thing as a diet chart. Diet has to be your own diet, because if I give you diet plucked off from the internet or somebody else's diet, unfortunately, it's not gonna last very long. It's not, it's not a sustainable diet. It has to be your diet, whatever you are eating, your culture, and what food you're used to it, what food you know how to cook, you have to shop what's available. So, so that's the job of a dietitian and that's the difference between what you see out there and what the dietitian do. They can help you to understand. Okay. Uh, how we can change to meet, uh, to manage your blood sugar. Does it make sense? No, can I, I just add, Jyoti, we'll be having those sessions. Uh, I'll send the information and mm -hmm. uh, that one, it won't cost anything, then we'll Tell you the procedure how to do you can access those when we start um ashas as mubina said this uh, program of the healthy living so we will we, we'll do okay. yes. thank, you. thank you jyoti any uh, thank you mubina any other question please no thank you uh, i can see one hand yes thank you oh. ARG. Hi, dear. i am i am subramanian speaking you know, I thank Dr. Bala for the very, very nice, uh, I mean, uh, elaboration on uh, diabetes. And I just want to ask him, the purpose of taking MacuVision tablets and lutein vision tablets uh, in the, I mean, in the improvement of uh, eyesight. So the MacuVision and lutein tablets, people take them not for their cataracts, and not for their diabetes, it's for a completely unrelated disease, where, which is called macular degeneration. Yes, and it right. is done to reduce the progression of that disease. Um, it is a dietary supplement made of multiple vitamins and copper and zinc. And there have been two large trials that tell us that it is worth taking that. So if you've gone to your eye specialist and they've looked at your eyes and said, oh. you should take it, then that is a worthwhile endeavor. Along with that, you need to have a grid, which is called the Amsler grid, which you should stick to your fridge. And once a week, at least, you should cover each eye and look at that grid. 
If the lines don't look straight, you need to tell your eye specialist because the lines not being straight may mean that you have another bleed inside your eye. And so for macular degeneration, which comes in two different varieties, one is the dry macular degeneration and the wet macular degeneration, we can offer treatment for the wet type, which often affects vision very quickly. So that's a separate disease, which I didn't cover today because that was not what I was asked to cover. But yes, that is a, a tablet to prevent the progress, to reduce the progression, I wouldn't say prevent, but to reduce the rate of progression of macular degeneration. Thank you, Dr. Bala. Maybe, you know, we might have another session with other things as well, if, sure. if you have time and if people want it. Is there another Thank question, you. please? Yes, yes. Yeah, Thank you, Dr. Bala. Okay. Uh, just one more. Two other questions, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, what was I going to ask? I forgot what I was going to ask. <laughs> okay, let's let's have that question, please. I, I forgot what I was going to ask. Um, oh dear, I'll come back to it. It just may I ask? I'll come back. Okay, Poonam. Sorry, um, I didn't may catch the, the name of the also. Thai specialist. Sorry, I doctor. May I ask your name? Sorry, Bala. Bala. Bala ji, uh, sorry, I've got a few questions, so I hope you be patient with me. Um, as I was listening to your talk, your fantastic talk, first of all. Um, in the beginning, when you were talking about, you know, these these steps, these things happens, and we damage the back and. Uh, leak happens and it stains the wallpaper. So you did say that we do not uh, we do not let it go up to that extent. So exactly what needs to be done to not let it go up to that far? First question is that. Second question is, I've, if someone has um, those floating the dots around, which I do have, and I did get it checked too, but it seems like there is no answer to that and how I can, it seems like there are bugs flying. Whenever I'm looking at something, there is a bugs flying. So what is the answer to that? How that can be fixed? Thirdly, the question is that um, I did go and get a check that for the laser thing that I came across the laser only works for the single vision if someone has a problem with. If someone has a both vision problem, the laser doesn't work. And is it really true or not true? Thirdly, when is the best option to, or I should say fourthly, the, when is the best option to get that uh, that uh, operation done? Sorry about so many questions. <laughs> you ask. All right. The sugar problem, the wallpaper is extremely delicate. Okay. It's okay. as thick as your, as your credit card. That's how thick it is. It is so delicate that it has 10 layers. So if you want to look after it, then the sugar control has to be tight from for a long time. But if you're not able to keep your sugar under the tightest control, then if you go to any of the doctors, they will tell you, you need to have regular eye checks and they will look inside your eye and advise you of your progress. Generally, if you don't have much diabetic retinopathy in your eye, your eye specialist is going to say, come back in a year or 18 months time. That itself tells you they don't want to see you. That means you're okay. Then, yeah. If your specialist is telling you to come back every two months, three months, or every month, you know already that they... Somebody else... Sorry, Jyoti ji, can you mute yourself? I'm sorry. Thank so you. If you are having to go back every month, two months, three months, that already tells you you've been escalated up the ranks and you will have more problems. That was question number one. Question number two was about your floaters. Let's go back to the room analogy. Inside a room, there is air. In an eye, it is 99% water, 1% collagen. The collagen is a cobweb that goes from one end of the room to the other. When the collagen cobweb, when you're very young, or even if you go for a walk in the morning, 
a spider web is new freshly laid spider web you don't even see it and so when people are walking they walk like this sometimes suddenly they run into a spider web it's all a big thing but as the day goes by the fibers touch each other and suddenly you can see the web because it's casting a shadow now same way as you gain more and more birthdays you will start seeing your own spider web and that spider web cannot get out of the room because the room does not have a door it only has windows and the windows are locked shut so if you cannot re- leave the room you're stuck with the spider web inside the eye and the best thing you can do is make friends with them <laughs> sorry can't hear you we can't hear you dr bala no still can't hear you we can't hear you no 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 can't hear when i unmute good unmute i think the host muted me so can i'm you, back can Now, you the f- spider web if you want it removed you have to go through an operation for it and the operation has attendant risks to it so we don't generally recommend that operation unless you're a pilot or something like that we would say look make friends um you know this is the way it is third question what was your third question <laughs> you're glad she has forgotten <laughs> oh i do remember still remember about the lens, about the laser so the two windows together what do they do they focus light on the wallpaper okay and you're looking at a far away object and if in a good world perfect world they should focus light on the wallpaper in your case they are focusing light in the middle of the room so what did you go and do you bought yourself a third window you put it on exactly okay. <laughs> and the third window is focusing on the back wallpaper okay but when you want to read the object has moved near so you can't take the same camera and take a photo far and photo near so you have to change focus in the camera so how do you change focus when you are a child the inside window changes its size and therefore allows you to focus for near so you only need two windows but when you get to 44 the inside window says mate i am tired i've been doing this for so long you find another friend for yourself so then you're forced to either move the reading target to further away which you can't do because your arm is only so long or you have to go and buy yourself a window for that so after 40 if you were wearing glasses before 44 you were wearing a single vision after 44 now you're wearing multifocal you're wearing more than one window and that inside window you cannot make it move again yes you can put a new lens in the eye or you can do one eye for far or near and the inside lens you can put a multifocal lens in. and that allows you to see for near so that is a different that's a long conversation in itself on how to fix it is possible to fix but not the laser through laser okay this attachment to laser is very funny we have laser for diabetes we have laser for glaucoma we have laser for cornea we've got laser for cataract the question is not how you fix it the question is what do you want and how you get to it so that's not something you should be so worried about as long as it's safe and effective and gets you the the visual needs that you want it should be okay so i have a gentleman whom i saw yesterday he is plus 6 he can't see anything for here or there all he wants is when he goes and have a dinner with his wife he wants to be able to see his wife's face clear wo to dekhna hi nahi he is the ceo of a company he doesn't care about the screen he says i'll buy myself a 3000 dollar screen it's not a problem i just want to have a look at my wife's face when i'm having dinner now his visual demands are different i have a pilot i have a fellow doctor who needs surgery each of them has a different map and that's why we have to personalize or customize it for that particular individual so only when you go and see a doctor can they do it for you that's very good ah. very good dr bala we got rani had a raise that sorry so you saying doctor that if uh, i have a both distance and you that, make that, that's in a form i think would be nice. i want to answer i want to answer so you i need to bring your you need to bring yourself to a clinic we yes, can't do this over the zoom no worries no worries uh, thank, you, thank you thank you doctor Let me tell you something this much and yeah. are not all wearing the same clothes your sizes are different your shapes are different your tastes are different 
you cannot do this over a Zoom call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be there. Thanks. Thanks for answering uh, my question. And one other Thank question. You. We've got yeah. uh, Rani raised a hand, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My Thank question you, is, um, well, exposure. You, you better come next to Dr. Sundar, please. <laughs> Otherwise, there'll be Zooming to uh, Computer screens and the mobile phones. Shall I ask one question? OK. So while Rani is fixing, actually, in one room, Rani, you need only one Zoom. Otherwise, they clash with, like what Dr. Bala said, the two walls will clash with each other. Uh, okay, have you got another question, Dr. Bala, uh, from Mr. Ayer? Uh, yeah. My question is... Rani has got a question and then... Okay, Rani. How is the exposure to computer screens, mobile phones, especially late at night? We are seeing so much of the mobile phone screens at night and the glare of it. You know, how does it, because sometimes the eye hurts when we are looking at it at night, you know, especially the mobile phone screens. Yeah. So what can we do or how can we stop that? Uh, Sorry, Dr. Bala. I think, uh, Mr. Irish, you need to mute yourself, everybody else, except for Rani and Dr. Bala, please. Okay. Thank you. So mobile phones have been a mixed blessing. Uh, on one side, they give you the functionality um, of, um, uh, of being able to access anywhere, anytime, all your friends. From a visual hygiene perspective, which used to be a specialty at one point in building design, which is not done very much these days, the mobile phone has an advantage of being backlit. So you will have remembered as a child that your mother and father saying that you need light on an object to see. Don't have the light glaring in your eye. Have it on the subject matter that you're reading. And the mobile phones are quite good because they are actually lighting the material you're supposed to read. So that's a good thing about them. The second good thing about them is you are able to enlarge it. So yeah. the magnification is variable and so you can make yourself more comfortable. Yeah. The problem is not the phone. The problem is the yeah. interest in the phone. The, yeah. <laughs> the mm. problem is never the laddu. It's the interest in the laddu. <laughs> so if you're very interested in your phone and you like to see it for a long time, it's the issue is when you read, you concentrate. And when you concentrate, you don't blink. And when you don't blink, your eyes will dry out. And mm -hmm. so if you look at children, babies, six-month-old babies, they are perfect examples of people who can manage not to blink for a long period of time. If you have a blinking competition with a six-month-old baby, that six-month-old baby will win outright every time. Why? Because when they stare, their tear film, which is made up of oil, water, and mucus, is very stable. If you stare for that period of time, that tear film breaks and then it dries out. And when it dries out, it becomes sore. You feel like there's foreign body, there is some sand or grit, your lids start twitching a little bit. All those things are part of dryness, which is from prolonged reading. So what you really need to do is every minute, at least a couple of times, fully close and open your eye. Fully close and blink. And move your working distance to different positions so your muscles get a chance to rest. So, it, uh, Sundar, uh, Rani auntie, it's not exactly a phone problem. <laughs> no, so how, do, th that's what, so we have to blink so maybe off. go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and let the phone sleep too. <laughs> uh, do do, so there's no crime. The manufacturers of iPhone, Samsung and all have not committed a crime or have yeah. not tried to damage. The other thing by not blinking, there yeah. are little glands that produce oil. You don't yeah. pump the oil out. So dry yeah. eye has become a substantially bigger problem now in countries like Taiwan and in Australia where the people are just texting. This is yeah. what they're doing all the time. So you need to give your eye a break. Yeah. Or put an artificial tear before you start doing television. Or yeah. So the amount of light that goes in 
Uh, you can control that light. You can control the luminance, the brightness. You need to yeah. find some young fellow who will adjust it. And then you can, that glare. The light color spectrum is not particularly a problem. It is, and most people who've had lenses put in their eye, the lens itself has a filter. So, you know, that oh. quality of the light is not the issue at all. Oh. Yeah. So, just keep the eye moist. Yes, and, and bring, bring and no electric blankets in beds, please. Nah, Wear nah. socks, gloves, hat, beanie, whatever you need to do. Don't have oil heaters burning all around you. Don't sit in air conditioning. If you go to rooms that are air conditioning, you'll find your eyes will dry up. Not in the car. Don't have the vent blowing in your face. Yep. Yep. Uh, all right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Mr. Iron had a question. Now, Mr. Iron. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, if there's a slight damage in the retina, will, the, will that uh, repair itself naturally? Sir, if you tear your wallpaper, will it repair itself naturally? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's mm -hmm. gone, it's gone. Correct. That is why it's so precious. Mm -hmm. That is a very fine, thin neurological element. You can't yeah, no. behave with it. There is some, it is precious. <coughs> yeah. So nothing can be done about it. Yeah. Uh, are there any more questions? Mm. There is one question by Shobha Vijaya Ratnam. What about using eye drops to keep the eyes wet for Dr. Balaji? What is the question? What about eye, using eye drops to keep eyes wet? Moist. Yeah, if they're dry, you need them. I don't follow where, where is the the Yes, you can use eye drops to keep the eyes wet. Uh, I'm, I'm not clear. Is there a? If you need them, you have to use them. Tear drops. What do you want to ask the question yourself? Moisturizing drops. Tear drops. Yeah. I mean, most people need them these days if they're getting dry, especially women if they're going past menopause, will often mm. experience more dryness. And uh, eye drops come in a variety of forms. Okay, mm. that's not the good. You know, let me give you the question you should be asking. Hmm. Hmm. How to put drops in your eyes? How many drops to put in your eyes? I don't care about that. Right? Hmm. The way to put drops are to take a bottle, not touch your eye, and pull your eye down and put a drop in. If you can't do it, get somebody else to do it, but don't have the nozzle touch your eye. You hmm. don't need to put two drops, one is enough. Hmm. Second one is going to be watering your cheek. Which, which case you'll only waste the medication. It's like everybody takes two toasts. If you're happy with one toast, have one toast. <laughs> you don't have to automatically, and you go to the chemist, they'll often say, put two drops. There is no room for two here. There's only room for one. So put mm -hmm. one drop. Now, the drops come with preservatives in them, in the bottle. It's the same drop that people use to clean the swimming pool. Same chemical. So if you are putting lubricating drops in, like artificial tears, there are two cans, one with preservative, one without preservative. The with preservative, you can put maximum six times a day. If you don't want with preservative, you can buy without preservative, which come in single vials that you can put any number of times, but you have to pay for it. So the cost increases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's the difference. And thank you. Pad Padmanji, you had a hand. To... Yeah, my, my small question was, now, closing the eyelids for longer period, like, for example, during meditation, does it help uh, in the health of the eye? Sorry, which what? Uh, other than the, the bring the eyes, you know, Mark, closing the eyelids for longer periods, closing for example, eyelids. during meditation, does it help the eyes um, uh, rather than you know, um, uh, blinking the eyes so often? Yeah. Um, I suppose, but um, that is not the purpose of the meditation. I, I don't. I don't think I can answer that question in any with any authority at all, sir. <laughs> he doesn't meditate. Uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, Mubina, can you answer? <laughs> I have application. Uh, application of I I I I takes to the eye is that uh, damaging to the eye? I takes. Kanmai. 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 Oh, yes. Kajal. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right. So the fundamental problem with Kajal is the Kajal manufacturer. Yeah. If you manufacture, you get this little thing, round thing you buy from an Indian store. 
ah you don't know who has been making that kaju all right and you claim that my grandfather was using it the same company must be good so you use it the problem is in the manufacturing process if the manufacturing of kajal happened in a lead container you know they can yeah. use the lead that lead goes into the kajal Ooh. then you apply that to the eye the lead gets absorbed how do we yeah. know that there was lead toxicity in a couple of children in the united states oh mm. oh wow. so mm -hmm. which depends on the manufacturer the kajal is not to blame it's the where it was manufactured is the issue were they all indian children uh no they were afghani children ah <laughs> oh Oh, you must know, bad okay. quality, no? Yeah. <laughs> the best thing is they probably to make it at home. <laughs> I yeah, think yeah. Kavita yeah. Mysore had a question. She's been patiently yeah. waiting. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Bala. Um, it was a wonderful presentation from your side, uh, uh, explaining why the wallpaper. Yeah. I'm not here actually for a question, but I wanted to let you know that my mom is here and she's had two cataract operations with you. Oh, and okay. she's been wonderfully coping, and she's. I have to tell that the way she came out after the cataract operation, mm. she in her late seventies, closer to eighty, her eyes is much more brighter and much more better <laughs> than me in my fifties. <laughs> and thank you so much for your wonderful uh, treatment, Shreya. Yeah. And it, she had both the eyes cataracted. Had a cataract mm. operation with you. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Yes, clap, uh, Dr. Bala. The last question I'm going to ask you, Bala. You did my eyes. Yeah. You did my eyes a long time ago. Very good. Thank you. I can see you now. <laughs> you. I'm so glad you can see, Doctor Sundar. You can tell the public I'm a lipidal. Ah. Otherwise, you won't be able to mute and we won't be able to hear anything. That will be a big problem. <laughs> Last thing, uh, the, the role of lipidal in the care of the eye. Yes. You should tell them to the public. Yeah. Yeah. The, the can I ask a question? Yeah. No, no. Then there's a question here already. The role okay. of lipidal. Oh. Did you hear that? No, the Abita. Uh, Reba has got a question. Yeah, mm -hmm. just now Doctor Saab said that uh, kajal, जो बनाते हैं उसके साथ गड़बड़ है तो कैसे फिर करें हम काजल लगाते हैं? लगा लगाओ ये लगा लगाओ. तो क्या करें उसके लिए? Yeah. Any solution? No, no, there's no solution. I uh, that's certainly not an industry I've expanded myself into. Um, no, but, <laughs> no, I mean what without without. Uh, <laughs> but you don't know the man. Yeah. You you just don't have an idea of the quality of manufacturing. Um, yeah. Nobody has actually tested all the manufacturers to see the lead level. So it's not so much the okay. The applic the products which are cosmetic products. are not put through the same level of testing as medical drugs so there is an overarching body in australia called the therapeutic goods administration which monitors devices and medications mm -hmm. to check that they are safe and they are performing to the standard they are expected to the same equivalent is the fda the which is in the united states these make life very difficult for pharmaceutical companies when they try to introduce a drug but it is relevant and important for the safety of the public yeah cosmetic industry is not subject to that regulation so if you look at any uh, mascara uh, any facial cream anything at the back of it you will see 15 20 ingredients this is not a patentable product it is not ideal to release what went into your product you want to keep it a secret so you put down anything and everything to make this thing so how do you regulate the cosmetic industry you can't the way the cosmetic industry self regulates is it will generally know what is safe it will put the product out and if all of you start getting an allergy it will say no sorry uh, there is something wrong we will just change the product a little bit so one cannot give you a kajal recommendation as a doctor i can't give you that recommendation it's not a mm -hmm. medical product that we can go down 
the standard companies that make Maybelline and things like that and L'Oreal, they have standard products. It's a small manufacturer who's done the same thing for thousands of years. That's where you don't know if it's a modern company, you don't. But that's the case across the board. Uh, yeah. one, not to put. <laughs> one, more, one more question. The, the role of Lipidil, please. Yeah. So Lipidil is known as a, a fat-lowering drug. And as a side effect, it was found to be a good drug for reducing diabetic retinopathy. So it is very important. And this is something where you have to interact with both your G Look, your general practitioner is your go-to person. You need to go to your GP for things. And they need to be able to see the overall picture. Because I'm only dealing with a room. If the house is falling down and this room is okay, that's not good enough. So the GP has to look out of the whole house. And so there are different, there are heart surgeons who look at bigger plumbing. There are, you know, neurosurgeons who look at the electrical cabling. So a neurologist and everything. So the GP is the one we coordinate with. And they are the ones you have to go and listen to and talk to, to take the correct medication for certain problems. Uh, hello, well, Dr. Well, Dr. Well, you need to look at a different GP than I Dr. Subhash. for um, from the Facebook Live. It's a, we can continue question and answer. But I just need to go offline. So if you are uh, you can close the uh, meeting and then we continue question. Thank you. So one, one more, Mabina, Dr. Bala, we got one more session to come, not next week, the week after on glucoma and diabetes. I, okay, I'll check Dr. Sundar. Huh? Let me check that the is, calendar because I, I have another international meeting as well on Zoom. Right. That, oh. All right. That'll be in two weeks' we'll, time. We'll we'll Thank you for that. Really appreciate it. Well, very good talk today. Yeah. Thank, uh, thank you, Dr. Bala, Mubina, and all of you. Yes. There are about 30, 30 thank people you, thank who you. joined us today. And to everyone, and uh, please join Asha, support us. We're looking for volunteers. We're looking for people to join our programs and the doctors who support us. And on behalf of Dr. Valanju, Dr. Sundar, Mubina, and the management team and everybody, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for arranging. Sorry, I've got to go. Thanks very much. It was lovely. Thank you. And definitely I'll be seeing Dr. Bala. Dr. Prafun? Thank you. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye everybody. So we will stay on.